Hey Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome back to Civilization 6 as the Ottomans and we're in a pretty chaotic game. Now, I did run a little poll on my YouTube channel to kind of get the temperature of how you guys felt about the situation I was in. Should I, you know, continue to press really hard, immediately go to war with the Congo? Uh, should I power really hard for the late game? Should I set up a timing attack? And I think the plan here today, in real voice by the way, I think the plan here today is to... To do, a time, to do a timing attack in 30 to 50 turns. Now, one thing that is a little bit of a problem that I didn't think about when I made the poll is that it's really hard to do a timing attack when you can't see what units are available. So I think we're going to spend the next 40 turns, 40 to 50 turns, preparing for the timing attack. That means building mostly infrastructure. So once all these chariots finish, uh, I'm probably going to stop building chariots. Then we are going to uh, start powering. And when I say powering, I mean building things that give us science, culture, and gold. Um, I think one thing that we would like to hit in the next 40 turns was, well, you know, I can't show you it, but it would be nice to be able to hit nationalism. It would also be nice to be able to hit bombards. I think with bombards and nationalism, we might be able to pressure. And I think we might be able to do that in a few turns. I am going to finish a Barbary Corsair purely just for the era score. And we're going to need to have an empire in position that can retake the cities that are flipping. One good thing that's working in my favor is that there are a few cities around the world that are kind of flipping independent due to the presence of free cities. So if we can maybe kind of hold out against the AI, I think we'll be in a good position. Now taking a look at the city of Konya, the most important thing that I do here is to get this government plaza back up because my lack of a government plaza is pretty crippling. We've also got the campus placed in here, so I would say that's good news. And I would say generally, we're doing well, like we're we're in a better position than I think we have any right to be in. If I'm just, you know, I'm going to call them as I see them. I don't think we have any right to be doing well here. I am going to go ahead and cancel these heavy chariots because I'm powering for a later timing. I'm not going to continue to build units. Now we take a look at the city of Eritrea, Eritrea and we kind of need to plan it a little bit. Uh, we do have, let's let's have a look at the city and like take an accounting of, of the facts here. We've got ourselves a encampment, an encampment is fine pretty useful district could get ourselves a great general depending on the area that we want to attack so we probably want to attack sometime let me see yeah probably in the industrial era is our timing attack window so if we get a renaissance or industrial era great general we'll be quite happy about that so that's going to be formulating part of our plan if we take a look at the city of eritrea one thing that could be pretty useful is if we take that sheep tile over here because that's just a straight upgrade from this tile and it would be nice to also get these crabs online this city could maybe potentially use a harbor although this city is on a river so this could be just equally as valid to get a commercial hub in here and use the city to generate gold and um, there is a plus three commercial hub already in position now there is a plus four potentially plus five harbor here so the plus five harbor is kind of like doing stuff for me mentally it would also make this a much more growth centric city it's a lot of infrastructural cost. And I think it's about time that we started on the Kilwa in the capital. I really wanted to get the Temple of Artemis, but that shit's just, that, that boat has sailed. Um, but yeah, we're going to go for Kilwa here. I think we can get some good use out of it, in particular in the formation of Kabul. We'll have to kind of figure out a way to get more production into our capital. Um, we'll kind of cross that bridge when we come to it. You know, I don't think we can go for Kilwa here, unfortunately. I think we do have to get our lighthouse up. I will get the Barbary Corsair, but then I'm going to go for the lighthouse. And then I'm going to also look to maybe buy these two and see if we can build a lumber mill to figure out where shipyards are. So I might go ahead and put a shipyard here. We'll see what we can do. The other thing is building mausoleum would actually be a significant upgrade to the city, science, faith and culture. Yeah, I tell you what, we'll go for we'll go for the Barbary Corsair, the lighthouse and then the mausoleum because I think this gets me to the position that I want to be where these are like really good fishing tiles. It's, it's kind of hard to not optimize for fishing tiles. I think I'm going to have this city take all these fishing tiles and build a harbor um, when the time comes for now. God, it is a plus five harbor in Eritrea. It's so much gold. I just think that commercial hubs are better. Let me think about this. If I were to switch both crabs to the city, these would be three food, three production tiles. I say three food, three gold tiles, which would give the city a lot of growth, but not a lot of... It doesn't really have the production to build upon that. And it also means that I never actually build growth things. I think it would be better for me to focus... If I were if I, if I were powering for the late game, I would go for my trading district. But since I'm kind of playing a more of a mid-game play, I'm going to go ahead and get my campus up as a priority. Um... If I were to build a granary here, the city wouldn't really be able to work many more productive tiles. I'm going to go ahead and steal this tile as well. 
Rhodes has like an incredible number of really high pr- productivity tiles. So shaving three turns off this campus is quite nice. Now the potential for a granary is here. There's no farming resources. So a watermill is just like a really, like it wouldn't pay itself off in the time horizon that we want for this game. So I'm, I'm not particularly enamored with the idea of going for a, for a watermill here. Normally it's like an S tier pick for me. I do like the idea of a granary. I could delay my campus by five turns and allow the city to grow to seven population, which would allow me, well, that's, yeah... I think the growth is useful. It does provide science. It does provide culture. So I think I will go for the granary. Growth is always useful, especially for loyalty and stuff like that as well. Now, the city of Rhodes has completed the heavy chariot. I think we go ahead and just snag that library plus two science per turn for four turns of production is pretty reasonable. If we take a look at the city's configuration as well, it's only got one district. It could build another one. We could pop down a commercial hub and a commercial hub does feel like the right move for me here. Um, alternatively we could go for the theatre square and start pumping up the culture a little bit I think the lack of I think we have pretty decent gold per turn right now so I think I'm going to go ahead and place the theatre square and try to get my culture up just that little bit so yeah we'll go library into theatre square but actually do you know what we're going to go library granary theatre square that's the order that I'm going to go decide decide decision made how much is it to buy a lighthouse only 480 gold i think it might actually be worth it here to sell off a little bit of resources so that we can buy a lighthouse in farcelos because if we take a look at the city the lighthouse not only does it give the city a huge amount of extra population room it also significantly improves all of these tiles around here allowing the city to continue to grow to like a really high level we definitely need a builder in and around here to get some of these tiles repaired as well uh the volcano erupting here is pretty devastating to this city but it's not the end of the world you know like you know we got got a little bit of you know god's sauce you know god's mozzarella no not mozzarella uh oh my god what what do you call tomatoes passata a little bit of god's passata right on my empire so we just we got we got to clean it up it'll it'll be fine right we we, we, we clear off that little bit of schmutz. Our empire will be totally fine. Let's go ahead and purchase the lighthouse in here. Just because it represents such an insane boost in the city's growth. Ton of extra housing, ton of extra food. Now all these tiles are producing. And then this will allow me to justify working these kind of rather bad production tiles as well. So I want to make sure I lock in all the fishing tiles. And then we lock in the productive tiles. So really really strong growth in this city quite happy about that it has an encampment it has a harbor and it has a campus i mean these are all really great things granary would allow me to grow the city even harder but i definitely need the science temple i need like science now so the sooner i get that science the better right there's military training that's raid veterancy equestrian orders and the statue of zeus i don't think we're building enough harbor stuff to justify st- oh if i could get a little bit more diplomatic favor let me have a look. Can I purchase? Uh, it, would, it would cost me too much gold to purchase the diplomatic favor. Wilfred wanted to like, yeah, no, there's no way. Unlucky. People hate me, but we have massive negatives to our diplomatic favor, which is one of the big downsides of killing another player early, which is why I don't think, you know, for every area you own this guy's capital, I think that should like tick down slightly. Let's go ahead and get games recreation. We want to grow a city to 10 population. The most likely city to do that would be the city of Athens. No, not enough growth in here. P- possibly Pharsalos, but like the growth rate on that is way too slow. We would need to chop things. And we could chop fish to force that. We need to build two temples for divine right. Do we have two holy sites? We have one holy site, so that's unlikely to be able to be completed. Wait, how is there a mine here? What the heck? Does he have access to a resource that I don't? That's probably the explanation. It's probably nicer there or something. That makes a lot of sense. So we've killed this unit that's wandering around inside our territory. You go ahead and heal. I bring you in to go ahead and repair these tiles. Aid request for Tamiris. God, why are these getting suggested still? So there's more emergencies getting declared against me. Thankfully, the well, the emergency did pass, but it was mostly just Congo. So just more reasons for him not to, not to you know, want to piece me out. But we did just get a ton of error score from building the Barbary Corsair. We will be sending this along here to just to pillage like what we can, what we can scrape off the bottom of his empire and, you know, put into our pockets. That's what we're going to do. We do a little scrape in here. Uh, so we take a look at the city of Adirne. It's got its granary. It's got its monument. It hasn't placed its first district. If we kind of like take stock of what the city's potential is, it's looking pretty bad. Um, we'll need at least... I mean, like if I take if I take a little bit of a think about the city, we want to put a harbor here. That would be making the most sense to me. And then just turn this into a gold generation city, honestly. Just harbor, commercial hub, a couple of lumber mills. The city kind of feeds my empire gold um and so that is what we are going to do so to really improve the city it's going to need a builder and the hard part is just finding time to make them we do have the double builder production card plugged in so i'm going to quickly sneak out two builders in my capital because i think those will be useful i just hope this catapult's gonna you know take that hit from this bombard 
I uh, I kind of moved him a little bit incorrectly. Okay, the bombard did not shoot, which is kind of maybe a mistake on his end. Right. Kill a unit with a car dry room, unlikely to happen. Have six cities following your religion, don't have a religion, unlikely to happen. I think it would be nice to get retainers here. I think we could make good use out of retainers. We have a ton of units that's kind of sitting around. How fast could I get a settler here? Let's have a look at the city screen. So I want to see yields. Eritrea or Istanbul. So we'll get a settler out of Eritrea. And I'll get a settler out of my capital. And I think these are kind of necessary settlers because we have a city over here we can place and a city over here that we can place. And I think these cities, while they don't look on paper very good, I do think they actually significantly help us. And then what's our third most productive city? Roads. Right, let's go into roads then and start another settler as well. Now, I know this probably sounds a little bit crazy. It's like, what are you, what are you going for settlers for? It's just like the sooner we get these cities out and if these are indeed the last settlers that we build, um, the better for our empire. Right, so there's military tactics. Very nice. Let's do a little coastal raid here. 180 gold. We pop in here, we do another little coastal raid, 180 gold. Probably should have the raid card plugged in. So that's potentially a mistake here um, that we'll have to correct. I'll do it after this builder pops out because I want to make a few different changes to my government. Believe it or not, Quila is actually flipping independent. There's a lot of pressure happening here, which I'm quite happy about. And there's potential for us to hit another golden age if we keep on this pathway that we're on. I like how we barely dink this guy. Like three catapults shooting him did like a total of what? Seven, 16 damage? It's nothing. There's military engineering giving us access to the armory. That's going to be a useful building to build for when we actually start pumping out units in the late game. We also have access to the military engineer, the trebuchet and niter. We don't really need to upgrade to trebuchets just yet, but we do in fact found, find niter, which is handy because it means we do have bombards as a viability thing. Uh, we've got 20 to 40 turns to earn 10 era score and we would like to golden age if at all possible so I think we will be looking to get that era score if we can. Do we want to now research stirrups? I think we do. We also want to build a lumber mill to boost mass production. It would be nice to earn a great scientist although that's very unlikely just given the sheer amount of scientist points that other people are earning. So all these fishing coastal resources are improved. I do think it's viable to get this wheat online. I think it's a totally fair thing to do. I would actually like units to be more expensive so I'll vote for that. And I'd like trade with in militaristic city-states to be better. I don't know if that's going to pass, but that's what I would like. Absolutely shattering blizzard hitting my empire. You know, this is just... Okay, I get, okay, I remember what kind of game we're in here. This is the Potato McWhiskey Must Suffer game. I, you know, I, for a moment there, I thought we had a little bit of levity. I thought we had a chance to get our empire back together. But no, I, I remember now. I remember the game we're in. You know, for a very brief period of time there, I was like, oh, you know, things are actually kind of going in the right direction for us. And then the illusion was shattered. So let's go ahead and unlock this. We're going to take out this. We're going to plug in the 50% settler production boost. We don't need maneuver anymore. In fact, we could probably switch away from oligarchy. And I think we will. We're going to switch to classical republic. This does mean that our gold will be very strained, but it does mean that we can plug in settler production and urban planning. We could also go for natural philosophy, but I think the production now just in the short term is very, very handy. Yeah, for a very, very brief period of time, I was under the impression that this would be like a fun game. And then, you know, the game did everything that I could to very quickly dispossess me of that notion because it just eradicated all of the mines that I just rebuilt. You know, this is just this is just an evil game. This game was made by evil men. Evil men who wanted to watch people suffer. It actually it actually somehow the blizzard managed to I need builders. I need builders. It just swept through and actually eradicated. Okay, so we're pushing the we're pushing the counterattack back out like ten turns because we have to. I don't know what to tell you, but that is horrific. Now if we are going for a war direction, I think getting Warlord's Throne would be good. Now we should prioritize the campus I think no I think we, we get the wallers thrown because that locks in our government policy card and then we can start to think about switching our government oh my god it moved again and just did even more damage it's it's just it's like look at this it actually swept through the entirety of the northern half of my empire and did an absurd absurd amount of damage there's not even really enough stuff for me to fix that like can we go check hang on crippling blizzard eight tiles fertilized 16 tiles damaged and nine population lost this hit my empire the juice was not worth the squeeze let me tell you okay that was absolutely not worth it god that was horrendous okay the second that these settlers finish this city was so badly damaged that i couldn't build settlers just put that, just to, to, to remind you, just to let you know, both of these cities were so badly damaged, they went down to one population, which meant they could no longer build, no longer build settlers. That is horrific. So in order to get guilds, we need to build two markets. I don't think we actually ever managed to finish commercial hubs. It's because of the chaotic game that we're in. Um, so I think it's pretty safe to research that, and we will. So we managed to get a library in Farsalos. It would be good, I think, to get my second trader in here. I can't afford to buy it and I need that gold per turn to make up for the fact that I no longer have conscription plugged in, making my units cheaper to maintain. Uh, I think another player has been killed. 
Um, this list up here is looking a lot thinner than I remember. Oh, Canada died to rebellion. Well, that's kind of cool. I didn't realise the AI was so bad at uh, managing this part of the game. Canada just, like, Canada rebelled. Which, you know, to be honest, knowing Canadians, uh, that's actually entirely within the realm of possibility. These are things that do not surprise me. You know, the average Canadian, sure, they, they act real nice and polite. But let me tell you, when push comes to shove, those guys are out there with rifles holding the barricades. Now, the one thing that this does is it actually opens up a very sneaky opportunity for somebody with perhaps a barbarian corsair to sweep in along this coastline and, you know, chew up a little bit of this infrastructure. Take, take a few bites out of them, if you will. And, you know, I'm not entirely inclined to avoid this eventuality because I just got 300 signs, which immediately finishing shipyards for myself. And, you know, we're, we're just we're getting more and more value. So that was just incredible there. We got 300 signs and 200 faiths from that alone. Now, I don't think we still have monumentality, do we? Oh, we could. We could plug in monumentality on a temporary basis, which I think we will do. And we'll do like a round of builders. And that would probably solidify my future. So with shipyards researched, we don't need to research either of these. We can kind of skip them. They're dead end technologies. We could maybe universities would actually be useful for powering for the late game. Um, I'm pretty sure maybe some units died here as well. Although I, I can't prove it. You know, I don't have the evidence to back that up, to back up my claims there. So have a settler. You're going over here to again, this will just be another gold generating city. It'll exist just to generate a bit of cash flow for me. I'm trying to just put my empire back together. My empire has been kind of smashed up a little bit, which has left me in a, you know, not... I'm not in a terrible position. I'm just in an awkward position that is worse than it was a few turns ago. So with the campus completed, we'll go have to just go go back through and repair all these things again. Because it's like infrastructure that we've already invested into. And it, if it's broken, you're getting no value out of it. So you got to fix the things that are broken. You know, that's why the phrase exists. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's because if it is broken, you should fix it. Like that's just how the world is. And I, I don't know what to tell you if you don't understand that. Now, currently I'm doing, I'm trading with Kabul from Rhodes which does not feel amazing. However, Jelonis, that's a six gold trade route. That's actually so much money <laughs> for me right now. I definitely feel like the city should be building a shipyard. I think we do this. We go granary, shipyard, armory, and then this is going to be a production center for units once it finishes all this. We might even be able to slip in an industrial zone when that city hits 10 population. All right, so you've done a great job. I think the only thing we're missing now is a two food tile to give the city positive growth because right now the city is positive one growth from the granary. It's getting two, go two food from the... The, the, the city center tile and that it's getting two food from each of the workers if we have a two food tile and then a bunch of one food tiles that'll just it'll just double the growth rate of the city um, I don't know how to explain this but basically if we work this crab tile and it has two food on it that will mean our food surplus no matter what other tiles we work will be plus two which is twice as much as plus one food surplus meaning the city will grow twice as fast so hopefully that makes sense. So in the short term, we will lose out on a significant amount of production. But in the long term, we, we win out by having population grow twice as fast. So there's education. The volcano erupted again. It's just actually, I, I think I just, I starting to give up on this area here. Um, I didn't mean to finish this builder. That was a bit of a mistake. I wanted to finish all my settlers first, but it's not the end of the world. We settle you here. So there's, there's like a couple cities here. I think we go city here. One, two, three. Because this, this is actually a pretty decent city right here. And then if we put a city here, this is just a loyalty muscle. It claims a bit of empty land, forwards our borders. Yes, it doesn't really do much as a city, but it's a loyalty muscle. It adds to the muscle of my empire. Uh, I'd really like to get cartography, plus getting plus one production from quarries is really, really nice. And the governor title for Suleiman, although I'm probably the wrong Suleiman for that. Um, but plus two fishing gold, boat gold, that would actually really, really help out my GPT because I'm working a significant amount of fishing boats. It looks like somebody built Kilwa, which, you know, there's not much I can do about that. It was just the kind of game that it is. You get, you get screwed on that. We will go ahead and place the harbor right there. This is going to be another gold generating city. It just literally exists to generate gold. There's not much you can do with a tundra city. So I'm going to dedicate it to making the cash. Make me trade routes, make me gold, fuel my other cities. I think that's a totally valid use of the case of this city. Now, one thing we will need is we'll need some builder charges over here. But we, we have a play in mind in about two turns, which is when these settlers will finish, I'll be able to come into my government, plug in monumentality and the plus two builder card card, plus two builder charge card, rather, plus two builder card card. Builders have cards? Jesus Christ, nobody told me. And once we, we you know, we'll cross those bridges when we come to, we definitely need another productive tile in the capital. So I'm going to go ahead and get that forest with a lumber mill on it. It looks like Quila actually flipped independent. Could I do something here? Ooh, we're heading into the next era and we do not have a golden age secured. So what can we do? Well, I'll tell you what. If I can come back in here and quickly take naval tradition. Well, I'll finish guilds. But if I could take naval tradition, let me have a look at Preslav. Influenced by Movember. So I think if I can break suzerainty of Preslav, I think I'll get some error score out of that. Yes, plus two. So now we just need to find two more. How fast can you build an armory? 
10 turns. That's a little bit too slow. We would need a little bit faster. If we built the army, that would be plus one. Upgrading two archers to crossbows, that'd be plus one. Cost a lot of gold. Getting a great person, that'd be another plus two. Well, no one wants to buy anything off me because they all denounce me. Settling a city on a different continent might do it. So nice, we've, we've inputted a lot of builder charges here. Now let's make sure that we focus on working the crabs. And then after that, we don't care what the city works as long as it's a productive tile. Like, that's fine. Um, and now that the cities, oh yeah, let me let me show this right. If, if I stop working the crabs, the city grows in nine turns. If I work the crabs, I work grow in five. So it's slightly less than double, but it is. But that's just because of the way the food works out. It is actually do growing twice as fast as you would normally expect a city to grow. So it turns out, just like waiting in the in the in this game mode, actually defeats the AI. I haven't played this game mode in a very very long time. I think we'll take grants on Pingala just because I like the idea of having a hundred percent more great people points. So maybe we can get first settled city. We, well, I think you get error score for settling on desert. So as long as you can get there in a reasonable number of turns, I think we can get the error score that we need. So I think we have ourselves a golden age secured, which will buy us time to go to war with the other civs. I've got a two charge builder. I'm going to send it over to Sivas to help that out. And this is where we make some significant changes. We're going to get rid of colonization. We're going to get rid of Praetorian Guard. We're going to plug in monumentality. We'll also plug in natural philosophy just for that little bit of extra cash. No, 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 no. Sorry, serfdom. Urban planning, I think, is still quite good, but it's not necessary for what we want to be doing. Do you know what? Plus one production is, it doesn't seem like much, but when your empire's production is this low, like if I check out my cities, you know, if we do like a quick napkin math here, 20, 10, what is that? Uh, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Call it 70 production. Call it 80 production. Call it 90 production. Yeah, literally that's 10% of my empire's production right now. Um, I wish there was a total field that would show you how much production you're making. But that this 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 card right here is 10% of my empire's total production, which I think is significant. I think, I think it is. I think it's making a difference. So we got the monument in Halep. Um, I think I'm going to take this wheat tile to give the city a bit of growth. And then... I'm going to go ahead and take the iron tile as well to give the city a little bit of production. And that'll give the city a much better kickstart. If we go for the water mill and the granary, that'll allow the city to actually grow. Let me have a look. So we got a plus five campus there. As much as I would love that plus five campus, like a plus four campus to reserve that farm is way worth it. And we got a plus three. Yeah, so I think we'll... This is going to be late game economy city, so we'll place the campus, but we'll go for the water mill and the granary first. We place the campus because we want the science to power for the late game. Uh, and then I think we take suzerainty of Preslav, although the one that I really wanted was Kabul, but I might be able to levy Preslav. Can I, can I tell if this is still pillaged? It doesn't look pillaged. Let's go have a little look. I will take a couple of turns here, though, to get a promotion, because that way I can get extra gold from pillaging with that promotion. So I think that's totally worth it. God, this guy has just been running around trying to fix this volcano. Right. So we've got a decent amount of faith. I don't think I have Liang yet, but I'm just going to go through my empire and buy as many builders as I can. And my logic here is that while I might not make use of all of these builder charges now, this is the best use of my faith. Like as the game currently stands, having a massive amount of builder charges on tap is just like, it's just supercharging my empire. I don't have any more room for settlers, so I don't need settlers. And my empire just lacks builders. So making use of those just seems totally logical to me. Yeah, this is starting to look like a city with potential, right? It's already making five production. So we'll move the Barbary Corsair along the coastline and then we'll go ahead and take loot. That'll be plus five gold. Wait, yes, plus, plus 50 gold from coastal raids, which means even hitting these farms now becomes worth it. Because we tap a farm, we get 50 gold out of it and it costs this thing no movement points. A little bit of an eruption down here, which is actually quite favorable for us because we do plan to settle in here. Um, we have, we need these plantations back online. Things are looking pretty good. I'd say my empire is definitely now recovering, m almost certainly due to the fact as well that other empires are suffering. Other people's misfortune is my fortune, is kind of like the name of the game here, which you know isn't like... I suppose that isn't really the way that you're supposed to think about things, but it is the way that it's working in this game for me. We take a look at the tiles that Istanbul works. Let me do like this to make sure we maximize our growth. Let me do this to make sure we pr maximize our production, maximize our production. And then we could potentially put another farm here. Wouldn't really change the game for us. Yeah, I don't think there's really... M yeah, I don't think we change much here. Okay, but this city does have plus four food surplus now, so it's growing reasonably quickly. I don't think there's many tile improvements I can put in here that actually improve the city. So I'm going to send these builders to the east because there are tile improvements over here, for example, that will significantly increase the city of Konya. Right, I'm quite happy with this. Roads, you're working good tiles. You probably have too many good tiles, if I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to take that quarry off you. You don't need that quarry. Let's be real. So we finally got the lighthouse in the capital. We definitely want the shipyard in the capital. It's three production. But now we are going to have to kill a deer tile for the mausoleum which does not feel great, but I think, let me check, is this the best city to do this in? I honestly, I honestly think it is. I think this is the best city that we're going to get to do this. Yes, we just crushed a double chomp, but like what choice do I have? 
I need to think about how I'm going to get more production into the city. I mean, one option is internal trade routes to Konya, which I think I will do an internal trade route to Konya. Yeah, I think I will. But taking a look at the city of Konya, we're getting close to seven pop. I'll pop down a granary. There is also an argument made for a watermill because the city is working a wheat tile. So I'll go watermill granary or gran- granary watermill and try to keep that city going. I need an era score. And I think settling the city will get me it. Yes, perfect. Little bit of a loyalty issue in there, but we can solve that, I think. I definitely feel like you have embrasure, meaning we build units with promotions, which is fantastic. So we just have that. I don't think we have much in the way of chopping. So we think we'll just grab Liang because it's an efficient place to get builders from. And I'll just put her into roads for now. Unfortunately, she won't establish before the era ends. So I'm just going to go ahead and spend my faith to get another builder um, over here in Adana, just because he's well positioned to get like these nice luxuries online. Speaking of luxuries, no one wants to sell me any luxury. So unlucky on on that front we're doing really well we're doing really really well i'm actually feeling quite confident believe it or not my confidence like every time the game throws some shit at me my confidence dips like significantly and then we kind of recover from the dip and then we recover from the dip and then there's a down you know and then there's you know we we, we go back up and then we go down because the game hits us again so i think i think generally though i'm feeling like we're on i, I kind of lost the track of what i was saying there a little bit um and i think i just spouted nonsense <laughs> I think I just actually just said I literally just said something that doesn't mean anything. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that was the sentence that I just managed to get out of my mouth because I was getting distracted trying to pay attention to the game and talk. Basically, I'm feeling confident, but that's, you know, that doesn't mean much because the game can the game always has something up its sleeve. It can, it can hit me again. Um now I'd like to trade with Kanya, although Farcelos looks like a much better trading target. Why is that? It just has really good districts. Um, but I want the shorter trade route of Konya. No, I'm going to trade to Farcelos. I think my capital city needs the food and production. It'll, it'll help the city along. It'll grow it faster. It, it, it'll, it'll, and the city is a city that needs growth, especially because I need to start buying these fishing tiles, even if I don't really want to be spending on that. I should really sell our Diplo favor too, because it's just going to disappear on me. Although everyone hates me too much to really like, oh, we want to buy it off you. So I'll just sell it all off for one gold. So this, this is the problem with killing another player early into the game is everyone hates your guts and it's hard to trade. I don't even think this is worth my time. So they have zero grievances against me. Grievances from other players. Congo would like to make peace. I think I will take that peace just so that I can bleed away these grievances here a little bit because it's significantly hurting my diplomacy options. Like no one else has a problem with me but the Congo. And so if I can deal with that little diplomatic snafu, I think I'm in a good position. Naval tradition. I think naval infrastructure, the double harbour adjacency card, that's actually a pretty good card. Um, I only have like three harbours and they're not even all complete. Don't know if that's worth plugging in. We could probably plug out Monumentality just for a couple of turns, just towards the end of the era, plug in Praetorian Guard. That Get that little bit of extra production efficiency out. It would be super great to get Merchant Republic here. Although that said, the extra faith gain from Theocracy and the potential for being able to faith buy units could be quite good. So I think I might go for re- Theocracy here. If we're going to be going for a war timing attack, I think Theocracy is the play. I need to get my culture up. My culture is my biggest stumbling block right now. Especially if we were looking at a turn, you know, 200 push timing. Now, I don't like this. I don't like that the Congo is absorbing back all these cities. Here's the... Well, he actually doesn't hate me, believe it or not. Weirdly enough, he is the only one who hasn't denounced me. Although that's only a matter of time, I imagine. Imagine he's just having a little bit of a think about that and will get back to me on the denunciation. So it really depends on who gets Golden Ages and who gets Dark Ages here in this era tip over in the next couple of turns. That's really going to set the pace for what I do in the next uh, era. I would really love to get the Grand Bazaar up, but I think we have to go for cartography. We just have so many fishing boats. The plus two gold from fishing boats is just super helpful. Let's go ahead and buy ourselves a fishing tile and we'll go ahead and improve it with a fish boat. Athens is starting to look really nice, actually. It's, it's built up into a, into a decent city. Culturally, we're just a little bit weak. I'm kind of sad that he never built any real theater squares. He went, he went, he's, Greece and he went for campuses I don't know you know the hell is what the hell's up with that he's a cultural sieve and he built campuses I don't know it just doesn't it just doesn't cut the uh cut the cheese for me no not cut the cut the must no 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 uh it doesn't pass the smell test everything I've said just smells awful <laughs> I know that sentence doesn't really make sense in isolation but if you use the context of civilization around those few sentences then it all kind of makes sense oh shit I could take the take the city of Quila let me have a look here. I mean, with the city of Aquila, it's not an amazing city, but it is a an amazing city. We could u- we could use this as inroads into Congo, I think. I'm going to go ahead and keep it. We'll go for the monument and the granary in here, and we'll see how this city develops as part of our plan. 
Let's get the library. Well, I think amphitheater is actually way more important. Three culture per turn is worth way more than two science per turn to me right now. So we'll go amphitheater first. Um, so looking at the city of Athens, it's got seven pop. It's doing well. Actually, we do have Eastern Orthodoxy, which is feed the world synagogues. All right. That's a that's a Georgian religion. Oh, wow. Georgia has spread that religion. Jesus. Theoretically, she's winning a re- religious victory, actually. This is probably the most competent religious victory I've ever seen in my life. So we're going to have we're going to have to definitely do something about that. Hopefully there's another continent other players are on that she can't spread a religion to. Um, but that does mean that going for a temple here does significantly represent a large boost to our food and faith. And also um, the temple. If we take the temple... This means that we have more faith, which we can use to purchase units later down the line. So I think I do like the idea of going for the temple. The university, like the payoff horizon here, is just very, very far out into the future. While I like the university, I think we're, we're, we're maybe powering a little bit later than we thought. Nice. So we settled the city of Erzurum here. And yeah, now I think if we take a look at this empire, it's starting to kind of come together as something that is a little bit cohesive, has a little bit of potential. You know, it, it could be a contender. Oh, I pieced him out. Well, that was a mistake. Although I do need those grievances to bleed away. So I'm not entirely upset about it. I could have probably used this turn as an opportunity to trade with the Congo. I definitely want an industrial era great general, though. So we're in a golden age, as you know, we should be. Let me have a look at the great general situation. So there's four great generals in the industrial era. And there's three people ahead of me to recruit great generals. So I may come in here and do a quick encampment training. That's not going to help. Shit. I don't know. We'll see, we'll see where the cookies crumble. You know, industry, de- depending on the great general that we get, that's going to dictate the era that we go to war in. Like, that's the reality here. Um, so let's have a look at the, the great... Okay, so Congo got a golden age. Not good, actually. Very, 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 very not good. Because that means now he's putting enough loyalty pressure on some of these cities down here to potentially take them. And it also means we're going to have a hard time. Plus, now we're both in golden ages, which means, you know, we don't do much damage to us. Now, the nice thing about being in a golden age is we are taking that 15% science and culture as an advantage. Let's have a look. So we could plug in two arms. We have culture industry. Now, now, if I remember correctly, this is the one that was bugged, but I think they fixed it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to quickly save my game and uh, I'll do a quick test <laughs> to see if this is still bugged. But I think that's going to be it for this episode. Maybe another episode of Building Up. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.